This is the Great Bowl Football Show, presented by Gate City Bank. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. The Missouri Valley Football Conference came into the week rated the toughest conference in the nation, and it proved its toughness again this week. Indiana State, a team that some rode off after a home loss to South Dakota State, came into Fargo and stunned the top-ranked Bison football team 17-14. More proof that week in and week out in the Valley, it's a grind and there is little margin for error. Here to talk about it, head coach Craig Bowl and Coach, the Valley's just flat out tough, isn't it? Well, it certainly is, and uh, we can play better than we than we did last uh, last game, Jeremy. But uh, I think there's a case in point. We've said it over and over again. You've got to be ready to play and play at a high level. If you're not on your A game and somebody else is, you're probably going to lose. And uh, on the flip side is uh, there's a lot of season left. Uh, typically, the team that wins the league does not go through undefeated. And so we've got to bounce back this next week. Did you sense the guys uh, throughout the week maybe uh, were letting down a little bit, or did they have a great week of practice? How'd the week go? I, I wouldn't describe it as a great week, but I certainly wouldn't describe it as a, a week where we just had all kinds of miscues. Um, and I think, once again, let's not take uh, some credit away from Indiana State. Yeah. They came in and they played well. They've got a very uh, excellent running back, and uh, but we can play better than we did. We'll need to to uh, play this next game. Well, it was an action-packed game. Let's uh, break it down here in the first half, and uh, it started off with a little adversity right away. Great crowd. Uh, everyone was loud, and the crowd was into it, but a 51-yard kick return to start the game here. Well, we've typically been really good as far as covering the kickoffs here. You can see it's right on the goal line, and this, uh, this return man comes across and makes a couple guys miss right there, and you know, we're fortunate on this play to go ahead and corral him, but it's, you know, it's over uh, the 50-yard line, and that puts our defense in a really tough uh, position right away. Some foreshadowing here, though. The defense played great all afternoon, and they do force a three and out here. Well, our defensive guys were moving around. We almost had the pick there, but the three and out certainly was a huge, huge uh, play. Their punter pinned you deep, though, and here's some more adversity, a sack. Yeah, it's difficult any time that you give up a sack. We're fortunate if we didn't come up with a safety, but now we're, we're pinned deep in our own territory on the one-yard line. Now they get good field position out of this, and Shakir Bell, talk about this kid. Well, he's a, he's a phenomenal running back, and you can see his leg drive, even though he's not real tall in stature, he certainly is a strong, strong runner, possesses a lot of ability. Really dangerous on screen passes like this one, too. Well, very rarely does the first guy uh, bring him down. He's very elusive, and you can see they do a nice job scheming, and they get all the way down to our 10-yard line here. And you'll, you'll see some elusiveness right here. This is a Barry Sanders-esque run here where almost everybody on the defense touches him here. Well, he's a uh, consensus All-American, and you can see why. here. He's got uh, great mobility, excellent strength, and a big heart, and uh, he's tough to bring down and appreciate the efforts by our players. And many times you'll say it's sloppy tacklings. A lot of it you have to credit uh, that guy's uh, ability. Got a break here, though, with the bad snap. Yeah, anytime you operate out of the shotgun, you're going to have uh, some uh, chances of that, and that moves them back now. However, they've got an excellent field goal kicker here, and he drills it and actually could have probably uh, come up with another 10 yards deeper. Yeah, that was a great kick. It's 3-0 Indiana State right now. Here comes the Bison offense. Brock Jensen to Zach Vra for 24. Nice play action pass and good protection and uh, good throw and a good catch. Now, Ryan Smith also made some nice catches in this game, 13 yards. You're moving the football early here. Well, we feel pretty good about the tempo and what we're doing. We were in too many third down and long situations, and this was one of them. Ryan does a nice job coming up with the uh, first down. Here's the athletic play of Cooper Wallow on that end around play that we saw earlier in the season. Cooper's got really good speed and good job of blocking here, and he uh, circles the defenders, and uh, uh, now we're deep in their territory. Some more adversity here now, though. John Crockett uh, has to leave the game with a, a hip injury. Yeah, he's got a hip pointer, and he felt like he could go. And here you can see he's just struggling. There was really no place to go, but I knew right then. I go, John, you got to get that thing loose, loosened up. He doesn't look like he's moving very well there. So the drive stalled here, but you get a 20-yard field goal to tie the game at three. Well, we felt uh, <clears throat> disappointed we weren't able to get a touchdown there. You need to get those touchdowns, but we were at least pleased we came up with three points to tie the game. So we're in the second quarter right now. Shakir Bell gets 13 yards on this upcoming play here. But again, the defense uh, doing their job. They force a punt after this play. Well, Shakir's an excellent player here. You can see Brian uh, Shepard really comes up and puts a great hit on him. But we got to wrap up better. And once again, like I said, he's a, he's a low guy that's got great mobility. You get the ball back here, and here's the first real uh, 
tough play here with an interception that goes for six. Well, you can see we overthrew the route, and uh, they've got good defenders, particularly in the secondary. And anytime you're throwing those routes, that's a pretty high risk pass. If you're not really on point, it's probably going to come up the other way. So the Bison go into halftime down 10 to 3. Brock Jensen, 8 of 14. Samuel Jury, 10 carries for 41 yards. Zach Braw, 3 catches for 41 yards. We're going to break down the second half in a little bit. First, Marcus Williams is on the Bison hot seat. What's the most painful injury you've ever had? Uh, when I dislocated my shoulder. Gee, those do hurt. Do you prefer fruit or vegetables? Fruit. What's more important to you, television or the internet? The internet. What's your favorite season of the year, spring, summer, fall, or winter? Summer. If you could have an endless supply of food, what would it be? Chicken. How many dates would you go on before you introduce that person to your parents? Five. Good number, pretty standard. What's your favorite cartoon as a kid? Barney. If you owned a yacht, what would you name it? Marcus the Spot. What's your worst personality trait? Sarcasm. If you could snap your fingers and appear somewhere else, where would you want to be? In L.A. would come Kardashian. Welcome back to the show. And, Coach, down 10-3 at half. I'm guessing there was a lot of dialogue at halftime on what to fix in this ballgame. Well, we needed to come out and play on point. We were making too many mistakes, and uh, we talked about some blocking adjustments and doing some things coverage-wise and going out on the field and executing. Uh, we did some things fairly well, but we certainly need to play better. Big point in this game. Don Morton won the coin toss this <laughs> week, so you get the ball to start the second half. Yeah. Let's roll the tape here. And uh, Marcus Williams... Uh, basically got you off to a real nice start here with a great return. Marcus is a uh, electric player here. You can see he does a nice job fielding the ball. It's a good kick by them. It's right on the goal line and Marcus comes through. We do a nice job blocking and Marcus breaks a couple tackles and if we could have gotten one guy there I think we might have taken it all the way uh, for a touchdown. Now you have a fourth and two play early in this drive. You decide to go for it, and Zach Braw, a great catch right here, but you lose Zach on this play. Yeah, nice throw, but Zach got drilled pretty good, and he's got a uh, AC uh, joint uh, uh, injury, and he's going to be out for a little while here. The drive stalls. You get a field goal, and uh, it's 10-6 to six here as we see Adam Keller kick the field goal in after Zach goes off the field here. Well, we really wanted touchdowns once again in the games like this. That's going to make a difference. We had good protection, good snap, and uh, Adam did a nice job, and we're down by four points. So John Crockett had that hip pointer, but he came back in the second half, and three consecutive plays here, he gains a lot of yardage. Well, he got that hip loosened up, and here you can see him moving pretty well. Good job of blocking. He came up with a nine-yard gain. Goes for 10 there, then 9 here, then 7. So this is a nice drive that's starting it, to develop. It is a nice drive. Good job of blocking up front. We're able to keep the ball on the ground and, and pick up some yardage. John really has a make-you-miss ability about him, doesn't he? He certainly does. He's, he's very elusive, and beyond that, he's got good strength. Drive stalled. You get a good punt, though, and uh, you pin him here. Nice punt here by Ben LeCombe. Really good job by Ben, and we got him deep in their territory. Balls down the uh, eight-yard line. Now, this play was just such a weird play. It was a lob pass play into trouble, but it ends up being a completion. Now here you can see Kyle Manuel does a great job of uh, uh, coming up with some pressure, and sometimes that underthrown ball is really difficult to defend. You do force a punt there, though, so no harm there, but then disaster strikes again. Here's the second pick six. Well, we're losing a lot of field position on some of those plays, and then certainly uh, any time that ball gets uh, deflected like that, and they've got good defenders. And pick sixes are, are difficult to overcome, and when you get two of them, uh, it's just particularly difficult. And credit Indiana State, they made a nice play there. Brock and the offense do come back, though. You need some points on this drive in particular, and uh, they start to move the ball here. Well, the one thing our guys have got, they've got a great resolve and a, a real a deep belief that uh, we always have an opportunity to win, and we came up with a nice drive here. You can see Brock coming back with good protection, good uh, good pass uh, reception there by Andrew Oakland. Andrew Oakland from Fargo South. That was a big momentum changer because then Crockett goes down to the one. You sneak it in right here with Brock Jensen, 17-12. Well, we knew if we could come in, we were planning to go for two, and that would uh, put the game at a you know, pretty, pretty tight margin. And so we, we dialed up a two-point play here. Coach Vegan called the quarterback draw, which was successful, and uh, it's 17 to 14. Beautiful play call right there. Now Shakir Bell goes to work, and uh, there's lots of time left in the ball game. Now it's only 17-14, but Shakir Bell did churn up some yards on this drive. Well, this uh, 
all, all game long, we've done a pretty good job uh, corralling him, but uh, you can tell on this drive, he really did a nice job. We barely get him down. That's Andre Martin holding on to his jersey. Now, this is a 14-yard. He got 28 there. He gets 14 on this play. A nice draw play here, and we just get circled. And uh, once again, that's, that's too much yardage for how we typically have played defense. You do stop him, though, force him into a 46-yard field goal. The crowd was going crazy as it sailed wide left. Well, good pressure and uh, good tempo, and, and uh, the missed field goal gives us pretty good field position. Now, in field goal range, moving the football in good position here, but another interception here. Yeah, you know, sometimes, like I said, it's a good uh, good read on their part. Uh, we've got to take care of the football better and uh, learn from those mistakes. Still time here, though. Over two minutes left. You have them in third and nine on this play here. Well, you know, I was somewhat surprised they threw the ball even towards Marcus, and uh, and we get flagged for interference there. And, uh, you know, that that was difficult because I think at that time we would have had an opportunity to get the ball back with some uh, with some time. Yeah, one time out left, two minutes left on the clock there. But that ends the game. 17-14, Indiana State comes in, gets the victory. Sam O'Jury, 55 yards. Crockett goes for 50, so some good yards on the ground there. Shakir Bell held him under 100 yards, and he did get injured late in the ball game. After the game, Brock Jensen met with the media. They're, they're a good defense. They really are. They're a good team in general. And they, uh, and when you drop eight guys in coverage, uh, there's not many holes out there. And, and um, you know, we studied them on film a ton, and, and um, we were prepared and, and just, didn't, just didn't execute the way we should have. There's a couple of things that I was a little bit surprised seeing. Uh, normally, um, going into a football game, you're really well prepared, and I felt like I was, you know, well prepared. But you know, there was a couple uh, defensive looks where I didn't quite uh, realize and see and on film. And um, you know, give credit to their coaching staff for um, scouting us up. You know, coach, last year uh, lost to Youngstown at home, and uh, you know, still rolled on. There's a lot of football left. What, what's the message to the guys right now to try and regroup here? Well, the first thing is, is exactly what you said. There's a lot of football left, mm -hmm. and uh, every game you have an opportunity to go out and make your mark. What we've got to do is, is spend this week correcting the correctable mistakes that we had, i.e., the offsides and the illegal shifts and things of that nature, and do a better job taking care of the football. Um, the Valley's a tough conference with a lot of ups and downs. We got to stay the course and uh, make improvement. But you know what? Uh, we lost to a, a pretty good football team, and we can play better. That's what we're going to have to do this next week. Now some significant injury concerns for the ball club here. Uh, Brian Shepard has a serious injury. Well, he's, yeah, he does. Uh, you know, I got a call late last night. He's got a, uh, a lacerated kidney, and, you know, that's going to put him out for a significant amount of time. Football's a physical game. We, we didn't know that after the game, but, you know, the next guy's going to step in and, and prepare well. And, uh, you know, we got a couple other guys. Zach Ross hurt. Uh, we'll see how John Crockett is. But you get this time of the year, Jeremy, there's going to be some injuries in there. Now, how about Andrew Grothman, too? He didn't play at all yesterday. He's a significant blocker in the run game. Andrew Grothman didn't play, and Garrett Brune didn't play either. And both those guys are kind of in inter interchangeable positions. And, you know, we'll see how they progress this week without question. We missed them. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll just see uh, how they come along. Now, the defense played terrific football, uh, specifically Grant Olson. And let's, let's break him down a little bit. 54 tackles, easily leads the team in tackles. Seven tackles for loss. And Grant Olson is just playing great football. Well, Grant's a really talented player. And uh, we knew as we recruited him, we had an outstanding player. But he's also, you know, selected as a, a team captain, as a junior. He's very smart, instinctive, and he's really improved his abilities. And here you can see he's one of the few guys that's you know, always uh, right around the, that football and able to wrap up that running back. Very physical player as well, isn't he? He can really hit you. Well, he certainly is, and a lot of it is just his tenacity and his uh, being in the right spot. He's a very smart football player. We all know how good the Bison defense was last year, but this year's defense is trending better than last year's defense. Let's break down the stats a little bit. You know, we break down from last year to this year. You look at total defense, you know, last year, give up 315 yards a game. That was 20th. Right now, number one in the nation. This is after yesterday. And also 118 yards rushing last year, 71 this year. You can see the numbers are really bearing out that the defense is playing fantastic. Well, you know, we've, uh, we've got a lot of those players back, and uh, we, we're going to need to keep on playing well. They've got uh, good attitudes, and they, they practice hard, and they work hard like all our guys do. 
The thing we did not do yesterday was create uh, any takeaways, and that's been our nature. Typically, we take care of the football, and we get takeaways on defense, and it was just inverted. And uh, you, you got you to do that to win football games. We have a great story coming up. Uh, former players who are now coaching outside of NDSU and taking that Bison experience and running with it. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. NDSU as a program has really turned out some great players. And some of these past greats are taking what they learned at NDSU and their passion for football to the youth of Fargo-Moorhead. In this week's feature story, Jamal Spencer found out the Bison experience is making an impact. The last year has brought a lot of growth and change for Tyler Roll. He helped the Bison earn a national title as a grad assistant. And he's gone from coaching there to coaching at Moorhead High. It's a little different time-wise, but the, the preparation is the same. Um, the game planning, kind of understand. I learned how to game plan. Um, so that, that helps for me bringing that to this school. Roll joins the staff of another former Bison great, Kevin Feeney, who enters his second year as head coach in Moorhead. Feeney jumped at the chance to add another experienced football mind to his staff. Step in, take a major role in our offense and development of our running backs, but on the same token, we get an opportunity to take a look at what Tyler's you know, past is and his knowledge that he's bringing from NDSU and the different coaches that he's learned from. The two men both continue to teach the lessons that they learned while playing at NDSU and from the coaches they still keep in contact with. And it really is a good feeling to know that you've impacted some kids uh, and have made a positive influence on them from the standpoint of being involved with the game, you know, and continuing to develop America's youth, you know, or high school kids or uh, peewee football. You know what, any time you come from a program like North Dakota State, I, I feel blessed that I had an opportunity to play for two great head coaches and a lot of different assistant coaches that came and gone. And you know what, I, I know growing up in a football background, my dad always said, any time that you can have an opportunity to sit and learn from football, you, you're, at any level, that you're going to be able to soak in and learn something. That's especially true for Roll, who's taken everything he's learned from West Fargo High School to NDSU to the NFL and brought it back to Moorhead. It's something that's really special because we love it that much. Uh, football's, football's a special sport to, you know, not everyone but a, a select few, and to be able to relate to um, some people with that, that love that you have, it's pretty special. For the Craig Bowl Football Show, I'm Jamal Spencer. And not only these two guys coach, uh, but there's a laundry list of mm -hmm. ex-players who are now coaching at the, the high school level and really impacting young kids. Well, it certainly does make a difference. And, uh, you know, football is a unique game, like Tyler mentioned. It's not for everybody, but uh, we feel really good about those guys are, that are out there and want to say uh, great job over Moorhead. I believe they're 7-0 right now. Yeah, and it probably makes you feel good and your staff feel good, like uh, Tim Polisek mm -hmm. said there, that you know, you're know you impacting these guys and, and teaching them things that they can implement in other areas. Well, beyond the X's and O's is just how to mentor young people and uh, making a difference. Uh, you know, I think high school football coaches have a tr tremendous and profound impact on youth, and so it's, it's great that these guys are able to go out and really make a difference around our communities. Does football really get in your blood like these guys? <laughs> they just can't get it away. Like Tyler plays, then right. he goes to a coach. Do a lot of guys turn from player to coach? Well, not a lot of them, but some of them do, and uh, I think what they want to be able to do is pass on all those good things that they learned when they were younger and have a chance to share, uh, and so it's great to see those guys move on, and they do make a difference in our society. We have a young North Dakota player making an impact on the scout team. We're going to highlight him in the Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison. Also take a look at our Nodak Mutual Insurance player of the game and talk about next week's opponent. Stay with us. In this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison, we dip into the red shirt class and a rising star on the scout team. Harvey, North Dakota's own MJ Stump, learned about Bison pride from his father who played for NDSU. MJ's attitude has never been anything but, hey, how can I help the Bison? How can I improve? How can I show these coaches that at some point I'm going to be a good football player and I want to be on the field fast? NDSU is a place I've always wanted to come, you know, and, you know, no matter where, I've, where else I ended up, I was going to be a Bison fan, you know, and especially always talking to my dad about things, you know. He knew, how, he, he got thrown in the mix a little bit too, and he definitely knew who I was, and it was nice to talk to him about that. But 
you know, it's definitely a prideful thing when you get to play for the team you want to play for. He's got a bright future. Uh, he's, he's redshirting on the scout team right now, but he's another North Dakota kid that has a uh, bright future ahead of him. You know, he certainly does. He works hard. He's, uh, he's a team player. He's got good athleticism, and he's going to continue to grow. You know, mm -hmm. he's a little bit light right now, but with a good off-season strength program, uh, you're going to have uh, mm -hmm. great things ahead for him. It's going to be fun to watch him. Easy choice for this week's NODAC Mutual Insurance Player of the Game. Middle linebacker Grant Olson had 15 tackles yesterday. Fifteen three-and-a-half tackles for loss. Olson is a leader on the defense, both vocally and by example. He is a great tackler, has a mean streak, which is important for his position, and he can really hit you. Being the leader he is, 15 tackles was not what he was focused on after the game. Uh, simple mistakes, just blowing a coverage, um, missing tackles, you know. There are a lot of offensive drives. I'm sitting there like if we set, if we set them up on the 40 or the 50 like we should have, they score. Instead, they got set up on the 10, so that's our fault. You know, that comes down to the defense and the punt defense. And that bottom line, uh, nobody else to blame but us. And we're going to go and uh, look at the film, get better, and hopefully it's not going to happen again. Great comments from Grant right there. Let's take a look at the standings, move on from this Indiana State game. But now the league is uh, really open, isn't it? There's a lot of football left here. Well, there is, and that's uh, how the Valley is. You know, we've got uh, a lot of teams. Anybody can come up on top out of that league. We have an opportunity to play South Dakota State, uh, Indiana State, and we need to, uh, or Illinois State, make the most of it. USD is up this week. Uh, a special uh, Bison football show on Friday night here on Valley News Live, and then the USD game is a mid-co game, but uh, KVOI did try to get the rights to the game in Fargo, but it is a mid-co game uh, only this week for television. Talk about USD a little bit, Joe Glenn. Oh, Joe Glenn's a really familiar name around uh, North Dakota State. He was at Northern Colorado. <clears throat> he went to Montana. We played him when he was a head coach at Wyoming. He's, a, he's an alum of South Dakota, and they'll have a, a really well-coached football team. Good luck, Coach. The Bison against South Dakota. A big week for Bison football. Enjoy the week, everyone. We'll see you next time. Um, this is a Kansas City rub.